It is week 13 of the college football season. We got six picks. It's rivalry week. We're going to make you guys some money. It's Austin joined by Logan. Let's recap last week. Man, it's been back to back to three and three weeks. I'm a little angry about myself, but let's talk about my picks. Then we'll talk about yours, Logan. Then we'll dive into today's picks, what we're taking this weekend. I had Florida plus 11 and a half. Your alma mater almost got the outright win. Clemson minus six and a half was free. The one that was just so organizing Maryland plus 10 and a half first half. When they did not cover the first half spread, they're down 13. I was like, yeah, they're covering full game after I did that. So I did live bet them at halftime. They ended up, co- I think they lost by six, seven points to Michigan. But either way, it should have been a three and zero card. But two and one for me. Logan, you at one and two. West Virginia, your only winner. Tennessee flat out did not show up, and Washington's defense actually showed up. What a surprise! And I've never, I didn't think they had a defense. But either way, let's dive into today's picks. We did talk about this in the NBA video that you do have Bet three six five live in Louisiana. We always talk about Bet three six five because they have the best odds for a lot of different markets, especially for the NFL, especially for the NBA. If you are in Louisiana or heck in any other state that has bet 365 definitely sign up but they have a great offer right now bet one dollar you get 365 dollars in bonus bets it's a great offer sign up top link in description deposit and bet one dollar on anything it doesn't even matter for wins or loses you get those 365 dollars in bonus bets so to my louisiana people welcome to the bet 365 family but either way let you came here for some picks and we got a big weekend. Logan's going to talk about the Ohio State and Michigan game, but you're going to have to save. He's going to save that for the end. And I'm going to start off first because I had a winning week, and that's how we normally do it. We're going 6-0 this weekend. My first pick's going to go to the South Carolina Gamecocks. I'm taking them plus 8.5, minus 120 on FanDuel. Now, they're going up against Clemson. South Carolina is the home team in this contest. And if you remember, you saw at the top of the show, I took Clemson last week. They back, I backed them. They treated me nicely. But I talked about in that game. You back Clemson at home, you fade them on the road. This team just does not, see, just can't play well on the road. They have a great home field advantage on the road. I just don't trust them. And while Clemson and South Carolina are close, and there will be some Clemson fans in attendance, South Carolina is still going to have a lot of people out there, and it's going to be a rowdy atmosphere. Now, you look at Clemson so far, like they can't play on the road, one and three, straight up. I'm getting eight and a half points for a team that's one and three on the road, just straight up. I wouldn't be surprised if South Carolina won. And honestly, USC, South Carolina won last year in this matchup. They were at Clemson for that game. And look, I just look at the end of the day, South Carolina, do they have a great defense? No, but it has looked better as of late, which is what we love to see. And I, I just don't have a lot of faith in the Clemson offense being able to put up points consistently and just consistently drive on the South Carolina defense. Whereas Spencer Rattler and that team at home, I'll trust them to put up some points, keep this game within a touchdown. We're getting eight and a half points. I think that's way too many for a rivalry game. I really like uh, South Carolina in this matchup. I think they these teams are pretty even. I'll take the home team in this one. Clemson obviously has the name brand, the notoriety to them, but on the road, this team just has not showed up all year long. So give me South Carolina plus eight and a half for my first pick of the weekend. But Logan, I need a bounce back week out of you. You're going three and zero on Saturday. What's your first pick going to be? Yeah, you mentioned it's rivalry week, and I'm going to the Battle of Arizona. I'm taking the Wildcats, Arizona, minus 10 and a half, minus 110 odds on Caesars for this one. We look at two teams, you know, I just see a big discrepancy between these two teams, and I am comfortable laying the big number with Arizona. Arizona's riding a five-game winning streak, uh, you know, into the final week, and are red hot after beating a really good Utah squad. They didn't just beat, they demolished Utah 42 to 18 Meanwhile, on the other side, you got the Sun Devils just got demolished 49 to 13 to Oregon and are struggling in their first year. You know, they're after Herm Edwards, you know, left this program, they're still sort of in a trying to find their identity. I would much rather, you know, lay the double digit spread with Arizona in this one. I think they are the much better team. And I'm just hoping they do play like it, you know, in this rivalry setting. We, we also look at Arizona. They've been decimated by injuries. They've lost six straight games. Uh, why, why would we back Arizona State in this one? I'm not really sure. That's why, to me, it's it's clearly uh, Arizona. We look, we look at the Sun Devils, too. They were picked apart by Bo Nix. He threw for 404 yards. All six uh, of his touchdown passes were in the first half of that game. They just, you know, I don't know. They don't. They didn't <laughs> game plan for Oregon at all. Arizona's defense, Arizona State's defense as well, 45th in passing and rushing yards per game. They don't do much on on defense that that would really convince me that they can stop uh, Noah Fafida. Uh, paired with, you know, he's he's got some really good receivers uh, as well. I think I think Arizona's offense will roll. And we look at Arizona State's offense on their side of the ball. They're only putting up 17.7 points per game. That's 126 in the FBS and not even 100 rushing yards per game, 120th in the nation in rushing yards per game. I don't really know why, you, why uh, what, what uh, sort of signs of life you've seen from Arizona State. I can't find any. Arizona's defense, too, 
they they don't even give up 100 rushing yards per game. They're 13th in, in the FBS in that category, holding teams to just 20.9 points per game, 38th uh, in the country on, on defense. I think their defense holds. I think their offense rolls in this one. And I think we're seeing a double-digit spread in a rivalry game, but it's a double-digit spread for a reason. I think these two teams are complete opposites, and I, I will go ahead and lay the big number uh, with Arizona. But Austin, where are you going for your second pick? I'm going to the Ohio Iowa State Cyclones, taking them plus 10 and a half on the road, taking on Kansas State. Now, if you flash back to last year, and if you did watch this game, I'm sorry, because last year they had a final score of 10 to 9, an absolute just snooze fest. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get another snooze fest in this game. The over-under is 46 and a half. Definitely not the lowest over-under on the board. Shout out, Iowa has got an over-under of like 24 and a half this weekend, which is just mind-boggling. But I really like the Cyclones to keep this one close on the road. Now, Iowa State is coming off a 10-point loss at home to the Texas Longhorns. Longhorns are a better program than they are, better team than they are. But they held it close, and now they're going back on the road. And despite only being a 6-5 and five team, the Cyclones obviously haven't had a great year. This is still a team that hasn't lost back-to-back games since September 16th. They've had their fair share of losses, but they've been a great team at bouncing back. Where you look at Kansas State on the other side, they're also coming off a loss last week. So they didn't look great, and I'm sure they'll be motivated. But I just think this is a closer game than a, a 10 and a half point spread. I mean, I think both these two defenses are really good. I lean the under in this game, but I'd rather take the underdog plus the 10 and a half. I just don't see Iowa State just rolling over and just saying, all right, here you go. Here's a free win. I just think Kansas State is a team that has had a lot of success at the beginning of the year, kind of faltered in the middle there. And they're kind of still, you know, they're all right some weeks. Never know what you're getting out of them some, uh, some other weeks. And I think Iowa State certainly has the talent to keep this one close. And, look, they're going to have their hands full with the Kansas State rushing attack. That, that's really how Kansas State wants to move the football is running the ball. But this is still an Iowa State game that, they're honestly, their brand of football is trying to make games ugly. They don't have the best offense in the world, but they can have a good defense that can keep games close. And I think that's what's going to be the end of the, what's going to be the difference at the end of the day. I mean, you look at last week, held Texas to only 26 points. Texas, very good offense. And while well, their offense only could muster up 16 points. I still do think they have, and te- I'd argue Texas's defense is better than Kansas State's at so far this season, this college football season. So I really like the Cyclones. I know they're not, you know, you know, a lot of people probably won't be on Iowa State this weekend, but I think it's a game that's a close one. I think it's within, within a touchdown. Maybe a field goal decides this one, but Last year, they had an absolute pillow fight. I just haven't seen enough from the offenses from either side to say, oh, one of these teams is just going to blow them out by two plus touchdowns. I think this is a close game. And look, I think that after a tough you know, uh, game last week against Texas, I think they bounce back this week. So I'll take Iowa State. Not saying they win this game outright, but plus 10 and a half, I think it's a little bit too big. I think the, if the spread was like six and a half, I'd say that's probably about right. But let's have 10 and a half. I'll take a stab at the Iowa State Cyclones plus 10 and a half for my second pick. But Logan, what's your sec- second pick going to be this weekend? Yeah, for my second pick, I'm going to the Iron Bowl, right? And I'm ta- I'm being a little square here, and that's okay. I'm roll a roll tie, baby. I'm taking Alabama minus twelve and a half, minus one fifteen odds on Fanduel. I don't really want to overthink this one because you know Alabama's rolling right now. They averaged forty seven point eight points per game while claiming double digit margins of victory in each of their past four games. This is a buzzsaw. You don't really want to step in front of them. I think Alabama is trying to make a, you know, a push to the college football playoff. And I, and I don't really see Auburn standing in the, in the way you look at quarterback Jalen Milrow, who's obviously, you know, caught some heat this year. Uh, you know, he's, he's, but, but uh, he started the year uh, pretty bad, but he's continued to play a key role in this, this team's success on offense. But the defense is still the reason why I want to back Alabama and why I do think, they, they can run and hide from Auburn, even in this rivalry. Look at Bama's defense. They're ranked 17th in the nation, with just 18.1 points per game allowed this season and 22nd in passing yards allowed uh, per game. So this is a this is a defense that, that really should be able to stop Auburn. And we look at Auburn. Oh, man, guys. If you look, you're looking at the box score last week and you were like, oh, surely, you know, they wouldn't lose at home to New Mexico State. Yeah, well, they lost 31-10 to 10 to New Mexico State. Now, I believe in bounce backs, of course, right? You know, you could have said they overlooked New Mexico State, but I just think that speaks volumes to how bad this Auburn team is because this Auburn offense has now scored 20 or fewer points in five games so far this season and are only passing for 154.8 yards per game. That's 118th in the FBS. For an SEC team, especially an SEC team of the name brand of Auburn, that's really atrocious. I mean, I, I don't really know how, how you look at that and, and spin it positively. And and their offensive line is not being able to hold up. They were sacked four times last week. Peyton Thorne does not have any time to throw in the pocket. He's kind of running around for his life. And he's failed to reach 200 passing yards 
in each of his past three games. So not a whole lot going you know, right for, for Auburn's offense at all. In addition to losing three out of their their, their past four home uh, games, the Tigers are also winless in each of their past three Iron Bowl appearances. So this has this has sort of been flipped to more of a one-sided rivalry uh, recently. You know, last year, forty-nine to twenty-seven home loss to Alabama in, in that one. I really I really think Alabama is going to run and hide uh, from Auburn. I mean, Auburn does you know get up for the Iron Bowl. We know that. We know rivalry. Uh, games you know have a different tone to them but I just don't see enough from Auburn's offense to make me believe uh, that they can catch Alabama in this one so I am taking Alabama once again laying the double digit number but it's it's high for a reason I hope Alabama can close that one out for us but Austin where are you going for your last pick yeah I'm actually going to be going to an over under our only over under on the card our only total on the card and I really like this under that I'm going with and I'm going to another uh, SEC team but they're not taking on another SEC team we're taking Louisville and Kentucky taking the under in that game at 50 and a half because there's currently the line minus 110 on FanDuel now I know no one likes rooting for unders and uh, you know if you don't want to watch the game I don't blame you but I really like this under in this spot at 12 p.m start now I was really close to back in Kentucky plus seven and a half but if you've watched Kentucky this season, it feels like the only time they cover the seven and a half, the game's ugly and they can keep it low scoring because this offense is just not trustworthy at all for, for the Kentucky Wildcats. You just have not been consistently able to put up offense. And last week, only 14 points scored against the not great South Carolina Gamecocks defense. Now I talked about South Carolina earlier. They don't have a great defense. I have already acknowledged that, but Kentucky only being able to put 14 points against them is just bad. And Louisville's defense is much better. And heck, they're much better than South Carolina's. And they're going to have a tough time scoring against Louisville, a team that's only allowing 18 points per game and less than 100 rushing yards per game. So this is a team in Kentucky that will probably try to run the football and they'll maybe have a little bit of success early on in the game. But Louisville's just had a great job stopping the run and they're going to force Devin Leary, the quarterback for Kentucky, to beat him. And like, if that's going to happen, sign me up for the under because Leary... He's just not been good this season, completing 56% of his passes. That is just not good. Not good to sustain drives. Just if you're maybe throwing a deep every play, sure, 56% is great, but he's not. He's throwing a lot of short passes, just missing guys. And that's not good for continuing drives. And that's just not good for scoring points. Maybe they, they get into the red zone and he's just not able to complete passes. Boom, you're settling for field goals. And if you're settling for field goals, you're going to hit an under probably pretty, pretty easily. And at the end of the day, I think that Devin Leary struggles against Louisville's defense. But at the same time, I think the Kentucky defense, the strength of this team shows up and i believe they will show up against louisville now louisville's a team that wants to run the football they don't really want to throw with jack Plummer if they don't have to but you look at them the kentucky defense allowing just over 100 rushing yards per game so if they can quiet that run game force jack Plummer to beat them I'll live with this under here. We've taken a Jack Plummer prop earlier this season. We took us over in yards, and he absolutely destroyed the line. But this is a guy in Plummer that some games it looks good, some games it looks bad. You're like, ooh, what is, where is that ball going? That's not even close to anyone. I've seen that side of Jack Plummer before. Going up against this Kentucky defense, I think they'll be flying around, and I think their defensive line does have the advantage against the Louisville offensive line. So I think we should see Kentucky force a little pressure on the Plummer, get him a little frazzled, and I think that could be the difference here where we're not seeing, you know, consistent you know 75 yard drive scoring touchdowns i think we're going to see some negative plays resulting in some punts some you know, maybe some field goals in the red zone so some mismanagement here i really think this is a good spot to back the under here hopefully both these defenses show up i don't have a lot of faith in the, the offenses i think it comes down to if the defenses want to play and i think they will in this you know sort of rivalry game so i really like the under i don't love taking unders but i think this is a good spot to take a louisville and kentucky under 50 and a half points my third and final play of the week that caps off a three and zero card but logan probably is saving it's a final pick for the biggest game of the weekend michigan versus ohio state and he's picking a winner in this one logan who you rolling with in this big time rivalry game that everyone's going to be watching on saturday at noon everyone's going to be watching this game and you know austin and i didn't have to pick this game we could have punted we could have said ah we're not going to open up uh, up ourselves to all the controversy in the comments that picking in this game would would open but you know what i don't really care i i really like michigan minus three and a half minus 105 Odds on BetMGM is currently your best value. Now, this spread could change a little bit, could go either way. But I really do think the Wolverines win this game, and I do think they cover this three and a half. We'll look at Ohio State. Let's start with Ryan Day. He took over as head coach for Ohio State back in 2019. His team easily beat Michigan that year, but he hasn't beaten Michigan since. And you know what? In in this rivalry, that's the only thing that, that sort of matters. It's like, can you... Can you uh, win that you know key game? And Ryan Day, unfortunately, has not been able to do that for Ohio State. We look at last year's matchup. 
Blake Corum didn't even play in last year's matchup. I think he's going to be a key in this one. I really like the the running uh, attack that Michigan has. I've always said, you know, in college football, if you're if you're able to run the ball as good as Michigan is, uh, th- that's that sets your your team up for for a, you know a really solid performance because you know they play really good complementary football. Look at Wolverines too; they rank first in the country in both total defense, uh, allowing 234.8 total yards per game, first in scoring defense, allowing just 7.5 points per game. This this defense is just you know they fly around. They're very dominant up front, and they could make life very difficult. Uh, for Ohio State, they've been particularly dominant at, on defense at home too. They're allow they're only allowing 7.2 points per game while scoring at least 30 points per game on offense in their six home wins this year. So they've been doing it on both sides of the ball. I don't really know how you go away from Michigan in this one. And look, Austin and I, we've made we've made it more complicated than it needs to be. We've tried to fade Michigan. We've tried to fade them in the letdown spots. And this Michigan team is is on a mission. They are going to make the college football playoff, and I believe it it does start with uh, beating Ohio State. That's that's their pathway to get there. They know they have to you know make it to the Big Ten championship game to accomplish their goals, and they're still hungry. And I think the job's not finished. I think they get it done against Ohio State. And I just have my question mark still with Kyle McCord because he struggled in compare he struggled on the road in comparison to his home games he's completing just 62 percent of his passes with eight touchdowns to four interceptions on the road i think you know playing in the big house is just going to be a really tough spot for kyle mccord and i think this this wolverines defense will be swarming making his life very difficult in the pocket i think it's michigan and i think you know the times austin and i've tried to fade michigan it's just us getting too cute it's time we sit back and just accept this team for being as great as they are. I don't. I don't see any way Michigan loses this game. I think they win, and I and I think it's it's by at least a touchdown. I think I think they could you know handle Ohio State, and I think if you're picking Ohio State for the plus money, I think you're going to be on the wrong side of this one. It's Wolverines all day, baby. I love it, Logan. I love the pick. I love it. And if there's something that's going on your side, is that I get some DMs every now and then that said, "Hey, for Saturday of your ladder challenge, just take Ohio State money line." Yeah, uh, every time I get those comments, I don't know if they've ever hit. I just don't know. But should be a great game. Obviously, bet with whatever you guys want to. But that's just our picks. Those are our six favorite picks of the week. Let's go 6-0 and on Saturday. We'll be back with some other videos. If you want to go check them out, I'll link our other best bets videos on the screen. Austin Logan signing out. Let's go 6-0. and Let's dominate. And then we got championships next weekend, which we will talk all about those big-time matchups. But Austin Logan signing out. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.